first things first that I came across now, uh, if you've uh, uh, been, you know, with us on office hours for a while or seen Johan and I at, uh, uh, you know, on some of our trainings or at a conference, you may know that we have a pretty strong focus on the window side of things. But uh, I am always happy to see, uh, since we're talking more and more and more about Intune these days, I'm always happy to see additional Intune functionality uh, on the Mac side as well. And as you see here on the screen, I uh, came across this announcement uh, earlier today, though it was from a couple of days ago, that Intune's remote help capabilities are offering full control support for Mac OS devices. Uh, so for those of you that are uh, managing Mac OS devices uh, and have remote help licensed in your organization, I'm sure this is welcome news. Uh, improvements are always a good thing in my view. Uh, let's see what else we had. Also on the Intune side of things, uh, I saw this announcement in a couple of different places, but uh, specifically I came across Daniel Bradley's uh, blog post on a new uh, feature or rather an improvement into how Microsoft is uh, using the supersedence uh, option in, uh, in applications in Intune. Uh, so now they have added the ability to auto-update applications using supersedence where the application was set to available to the user and manually installed by the user, um, which is a big deal. So if you are, say you put out Firefox, oh, what version are we on now? 275. <laughs> or, <Thousand>, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And 276,000 comes out. Uh, and you have that set as a uh, superseded, uh, you supersede your application, have this uh, option uh, selected, then those users that did choose to install Firefox are going to get an auto update. Um, so uh, Daniel had a, a nice post here on that option that's showing up as well as a number of different scenarios uh, for supersedence and uh, this feature. So uh, kudos, Daniel. Thank you for writing up this post. Um, last but not least, uh, one of our favorite uh, Intune tools, and there are many, I must say. Uh, I should say one of our favorite Intune community tools uh, from Michael Carlson, the Intune management tool, uh, had a minor update. Um, two days ago, uh, it looks like. So a couple of things to note here. There was a new feature for ignoring some uh, properties and assignments if you wanted to, a number of fixes as well. But the major thing that I wanted to point out, and I think we discussed this a couple of weeks ago, was that the default uh, Intune management application uh, that's been used in Entra for many, many years now uh, has been decommissioned. Uh, the Intune PowerShell app, I should say, with this app ID. That has been uh, decommissioned. And so now the default application that in the Intune management tool is using is the Microsoft Graph PowerShell app uh, with this ID here. Right there. Go ahead and highlight that. Um, so this is, uh, I think, an expected change, uh, hopefully an expected change for you, but it is in fact a change. So I wanted to draw some attention to that. Uh, this will automatically be used. Uh, if you do want to register a new app, uh, you can follow the documentation here to use your own custom application. If you are already using a custom application, there uh, should be no changes uh, at all to the, to the app. So. Just a couple of things to draw your attention to there and a couple of uh, exciting updates in the Intune world. Um, I've got a feeling based on some of the news that was coming out over the last 36 hours, I've got an idea of what you're going to talk about today though, Johan. Because I know you wanted to talk about it a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I, I Yes, uh, badly also, but it is nice to... Uh... See if I can get my screen on here and um, 
here we are. Lovely, beautiful uh, Config Manager 2403 was released. It's in an early ring still. So if you want to opt in your lab environment, not production, they are supposed to be different. Uh, you have to run that PowerShell script first. It is not terribly complicated. Open up a PowerShell prompt, uh, find the script in question. Um, see if I put it in here. Apparently, I did not. Um, there we are. Uh, you run that script and you specify your site code or site server. Uh, that's it. And then when you uh, refresh your uh, check for updates, this one becomes available. It took me two attempts to install it uh, because the first time I tried to run the installer, I was greeted by this lovely error message that, you know what, your uh, code management slider is in pilot and you need to scoot that one over to Intune because resource access is no longer supported in this one. So, all right, fine. After uh, doing that, I went over to my uh, cloud services uh, properties. And I waited patiently because this one takes a while. <laughs> uh, head over to my, my workloads here, and that one is uh, all over in Intune land at the moment. Uh, and that allowed the setup to, to go through. Uh, I did see some other folks on Twitter having a little bit issue with permissions. And that's something I've seen over the years as well in Config Manager, where basically the account that happened to be logged in at the moment uh, doesn't have access to the folder uh, that Config Manage is using to uh, uh, stage the content, which is this one here. So should that ever happen to you, just assign your permissions to yourself and life will be good. You can go ahead and do the update. Uh, but a few things that stood out, of course, is the new global search that I really like, uh, allowing to search across all different object types collections, sequences, packages, uh, you name it, in a single search. And of course, I was very excited to get uh, full support for uh, ARM deployments. So there is a new uh, ARM boot image showing up. And uh, as you can see, I'm using a extremely uh, unsupported version of the ADK <laughs> on this server. Uh, because my plan was to start deploying or test deploying the Canary version of Windows 11 24H2. And then came the second problem, finding an ISO arm with that version without having to go through the hoops of basically uh, leveraging uh, suspect websites to <laughs> get it being created for me. So for now, in, in my testing, I opted into the only ARM ISO I had available at the moment, and that was a 22H2 ARM. Uh, but I am looking into uh, how we can obtain more recent versions of it. But that's uh, uh, if I go with properties on this one, it will definitely show you here in the image. Just know that it is indeed an ARM architecture. And I'm going to create a few sequences and do some test deployments. Uh, I already learned that the export Windows driver command uh, does not work at all on ARM devices. So I have to go the old school and create the packages myself uh, for drivers. So I found them on the Lenovo website. I have an X13 uh, model, uh, Gen 1. That's a... Uh, it's an ARM device, and I created a WIM file with uh, uh, the drivers, the ARM drivers uh, for that one, including the, all the fancy support that it, it needs. So uh, hopefully tonight I will be able to deploy it. So quite excited about that. Excellent. Is that the uh, ThinkPad that is new to you? Yeah, I found it on eBay uh, yeah. uh, and, and uh, bought one. Awesome. And uh, uh, thanks to some you. help so from Lenovo, I, I also found a dongle that is supposed to be compatible with Pixie and ARM and uh, Config Manager. So we'll see. 